Good afternoon, students. In our topic today, we will be learning about the proper uses of natural resources, and our main focus will be on the social impact brought on by the improper use or the mismanagement of natural resources. Our learning outcomes will be, at the end of this lesson, we will be able to provide a very brief explanation of what a natural resource is. We will be able to cite examples of natural resources, discuss the importance of a few of them, discuss how reducing, reusing, and recycling helps to preserve our natural resources, and at the same time, we're going to interpret the social impact of improper use of natural resources. Here we have our chart, and these are just some examples of natural resources found in the environment. A few of them include crude oil, and we have learned so far that from crude oil, we can get butane, profane, fertilizers and pesticides, plastics, rubbers, and industrialized solvents. Also, we have learned that from bagash, we can get energy, and the Belkogen is a company which is located in the Orange Walk District, which has been using bagash, which is, which is the raw material, or the raw material that is given off or extracted from the sugarcane plant after it is extracted. So they are using bagash to generate energy. Also from the sea, we get salt, or table salt, NACL, and we have minerals such as magnesium and potassium. We also have sand and gravel, limestone, calcium carbonate. We get fresh water through reverse osmosis. Gymsum, which I mentioned, is used to make the plaster of Paris. Whenever someone breaks a bone, they use that gymsum iron to help make that material there, that cement material. And also we get potassium. And from our forestry slash vegetation, we have an assemblage of trees here in Belize. We have broadleaf forest, and I mentioned that from our broadleaf forest, it's a, it's a mixture of tropical and subtropical plants, or vegetation. We have agriculture, pine ridge trees, coastland, westland, and mangroves. We also have our land and soil, or industries. In regards to natural resources, we had mentioned before students that a natural resource is anything people can use which comes from nature. People do not make natural resources, but gather them from the earth. And some other examples, let's call them, they are air, water, wood, oil, solar energy, wind energy, hydroelectric energy, and coal. We have found out that natural resources are derived from the environment. Some of them are essential for our survival, while most are used for satisfying our wants. Natural resources are materials that come that materials and components that can be found within the environment. And every man-made product is derived or composed of natural resources. The origin of natural resources. We have learned that natural resources come from within the environment. But where exactly in the environment? There are two categories there. We have biotic resources and abiotic resources. Biotic resources are obtained from the biosphere. And what does the word biosphere mean, students? Let's read it together. The biosphere is the region of the earth that encompasses all living organisms, plants, animals, and bacteria. And we also have some of our natural resources that are considered abiotic. These include non-living things, such as land, water, air, and ores that come from within the earth's crust. We have learned that natural resources can be categorized into two groups, renewable energy and non-renewable energy. What do we know about renewable energy? Um, renewable energy can be replenished. Or replaced very easily, very good. And non-renewable energy, Josette? It takes a long time to replenish or can it replenish? Or can it be replaced very easily? And some examples there, students, we have wind, solar, geothermal, water, biomass, electricity. And for the non-renewable energy, some of the examples there, oil, coal, natural gas, and nuclear. Water, it says based on research, water is the most important natural resource and one cannot survive without water. 
what would happen to someone if they are in the wild or in the forest for a very long period of time and cannot get access to water? Or if a person is isolated in a dory out at sea, how will that person be able to adapt? And what will happen to that person if that person doesn't get access to fresh water? Rodolfo? That person would drink the salt water or any form of natural water. That person could just get sick or dehydrated by the lack of water itself and eventually they will die. Very good, Rodolfo. Also, air. Air is another very abundant and important natural resource for survival. It is needed by most creatures. Sunlight, just like air and water, sunlight is needed for the survival of living beings. And sunlight is very important in the process of photosynthesis. That is where our green plants make their sugars in their leaves. Plants, it says the plants are the main energy source for living beings on earth. Carnivores and scavengers. What do we mean by scavengers? Jamie. Animals that feed on dead organisms. Very good, Jamie. So the plants are the main energy source, and carnivores and scavengers obtain energy by feeding on other animals, which in turn feed on the plants. Now, wind energy. Wind, it says it is one of the least used resources on Earth. The process of obtaining energy from wind doesn't pollute the environment. Air pollution resulting from combustion of fossil fuels can be reduced to a great extent with the use of wind energy. Also, we just have energy. This form of energy is similar to wind energy in terms of functioning. In fact, the tides or our waves from our oceans are used to obtain energy, originally obtained it from the wind. And soil, what do we know about soil? How do we use our soil or our available land? Jahid? Grow crops or build houses on the land. For building purposes, for crop production. What are some other purposes of this, the land besides building and for crop production? It is crucial to human life for crops, as he said, but also for a place, uh, shelter. Um, a shelter, very we, good. We cannot just live in water alone. Very good, Rodolfo. And I keep out that he brought out. One more response. How do we use our soil? We have pastures and grazing areas. Okay, so we also use it for grazing purposes so that our cattle or our domesticated animal can get access to food and also a habitat as well. Now, these are just some natural resources from the earth. We have forest resources pertaining to plant and tree life. We have aquatic marine resources, hydrogeological resources, and it has water bodies of all kinds. Animal resources, I just mentioned domesticated, are those that can be easily approached by humans. We have microbial resources, organisms that aren't visible to the naked eye, but they're there in the environment. Some of them are very harmful. Some of them have beneficial purposes. Human resources. How can the human resource of a country contribute to its growth and development? A very big question. What do the people have to do? Without us, without the people in a whole, how would the entire population increase or develop? So we are the ones who make everything happen. Yes, by working as well. We, we actually create part of the labor force and we have to work. Okay, thanks Rodolfo. We have atmospheric resources. It has anything that humans cannot control. Rainfall, sunlight, temperature, and the light. Crop resources, agricultural growth. We have geological resources, naturally occurring formations such as rocks, valleys, minerals, precious metals, and other examples. We have edaphic resources, anything related to the soil and its properties. And we have wildlife resources. So you can see the earth is very abundant with the different types of natural resources. Now examples of resources and their uses. Just now we spoke about how soil is used. We said some, some examples, soil is used for 
growing crops, can be used for shelter, Rodolfo. It says many tribal people around the world create shelters with the help of soil. For example, some places in African countries and in the Amazon rainforest. Remember we had spoken about how people live in the Amazon and how they use the trees there for medicinal purposes and for habitat, for shelter. Water we use for drinking. Fresh water is used for irrigation of crops. And what are the different types of um, salinity? When we, we, had used it, we had spoken about fresh water, when we spoke about salt intrusion in our soil, what are the different types of salinity there? I will give you one, dry land salinity. Come on, what are the other types of salinity besides dry land salinity that might affect our crops there? We have irrigation salinity. Do you remember that, students? And salt intrusion. Okay? Fishing is a valuable source of food. And we get that from our waterways. Also, the water from rivers is used to generate electricity. We have minerals. And minerals can be found, can be defined as naturally occurring substances obtained from the ground. What are some ions that we find in our soil? Some ions. I-O-N-S. I will give you one. Magnesium. What are some other examples of ions that are found in our soils? Potassium. It says some examples are coal, petroleum, natural gas, iron, copper, and gold. They are also absorbed by plants from the earth's surface and are transferred to humans through food. We have vegetation. Land is used for farming from which vegetables, grains, and fruits are grown. Also, wood from trees is cut and processed to make furniture for homes and to provide construction materials. It is used for cooking and also as a fuel to produce heat for warmth. Clothing as well we get from our trees. Clothes are made from cotton and plants are used as ingredient in medicine. What are some examples of some of our local herbs that we use and consume as medicines? Cerosy is a very popular one here in Belize. Janelle? Um, bitters. Bitters. What are the other kinds of bitters? Sina. Okay. So all those come from our vegetation slash forest. Animals. Some are just domesticated. Some are wild. Animals are used as food and their waste is used as fertilizers for crops, like in the form of manure. We get fur and hide from animals, which are both used for making clothes. And animals has been used in the form of transportation for a very long time. Now, there is something called a balance in nature. The earth is blessed with an abundance of natural resources, right, students? It says, as we continue to overuse our natural resources, a serious imbalance can be caused. Deforestation, depletion of oil and gas, shortage of water and power, soil erosion leading to a lack of agricultural growth are all contributing to environmental issues such as global warming and climate change. It has environmental pollution as well. Interestingly, it is these environmental issues that are leading to further shortage of our natural resources. Environmentalists have already predicted major shortages and even the complete extinction of natural resources such as oil and gas. And if we continue depleting these resources at the present rate, what do you think will be one of the social impacts? Think about it. The oil that is found in Belize at the Michael Usher number one well, if we continue to exploit and send out all our crude oil and export our crude oil to certain developed countries and it is not used here for the locals, what would be some of one of the social impact of that? Rodolfo. We could use up all and then in turn when we need to import it, then it will be very expensive. Excellent. If we export all our crude oil and we do not use it here, and we continue to dig or dug in these wells 
And I, based on research, I found out that there are almost 11 to 12 functional wells where crude oil is being extracted daily. If they continue to send out tons and tons of crude oil, then eventually we will have to import the oil from abroad, the processed oil, and prices will increase. Now, how do we conserve resources from in the environment? We learned about crude oil, our land, our um, fishing products. We learned about the sea and ocean, the different products that we can extract from the sea, our forestry and vegetation. What are some things that we can do to conserve our natural resources? Think about the use of water on a daily basis. What are some bad practices as, a, as opposed to some good practices? Go ahead, Therese. By using less water when taking a bath. By using less water when taking a bath. Instead of turning on the shower, we can fill a bucket or a pail. That is one way. Another way, what can we do to conserve our natural resources? Think about the soil and, and fertilizers and pesticides. We are aware that many farmers use pesticides and chemicals on the soil. What can we do to reverse that practice? Yes, Josette. We can make a compost or use um, products and the manure from animals or fertilizers. Excellent, Josette. Thanks very much for that. These days, the biggest concern before us is the fast depletion of our natural resources, such as forests, natural gas, wildlife, oil, and petrol. The main reasons for this depletion is the improper and excessive use and the growing population. If the population increase, then there will be a need for further consumption of our natural resources. People will want more of what is there. A planned and prudent use of the resources alone can protect them from getting extinct. Okay? It says the amount of fossil fuels available on Earth are limited and hence, if not used with caution, can get over and cause problems for our future generations. What do we get from our fossil fuels and where can we find fossil fuels? We've been hearing about fossil fuels over and over. We can find fossil fuels deep below the Earth's surface. Very good, Jamie. And we know that fossil fuels are the remnants of dead plants, decaying plants, and organisms. It says, now, while talking about natural resources, how can we forget to talk about wildlife and aquatic life? According to reports presented by many wildlife conservation institutions, many species of animals are now extinct because of human intervention. Such human behavior disturbs the ecosystem and environmental balance which is harmful for us all. The existence of aquatic animals such as fish is in danger because of water pollution on a large scale. Now today I was speaking with another science teacher and I found out that there are some places and countries where there is a fish shortage on a pose, or I would say in Belize, we have a diverse range of aquatic species. But there are some fishermen who are practicing illegal fishing. They are not respecting the laws. Because almost all our different fishes have a season, especially the ones that are used for human consumption and the ones that are exported, like our shrimps, lobster, and conch. Now, if a fisherman is found with Juvenile fish that are on, juvenile fish that are underweight and have not matured. What our um, coast guard do with them and our fishing regulators, the people inspectors, people who are responsible, they will charge them. Sometimes confiscate their fishing vessels. Go ahead, Rodolfo. The um, question. In Belize, isn't there a nursery for these um, endangered marine life? Like. Not only, I, I don't mean by the mangroves alone, but like a protected nursery. From what I have found so far, Rodolfo, I do not think that there is any institution that is actually taking care of juvenile fish. I am aware of the Coastal Zone Museum and the Coastal Zone Authority. There are a group of people who are responsible for fishing regulation and policies. And they deal with people who, they deal with fishing laws 
and people who commit illegal actions against our fishing or marine species. But most of our juvenile fish use the mangroves as a habitat to grow. Now these are some other conservation tips. We have Go Green and that is what we're doing here. This is actually a campaign. We are teaching you to become environmentally aware and we have to go out into the environment, in our schools, in public places and teach others about the concept of Go Green, global warming and climate change. Also it says use less water. We have been repeating that over and over. Recycle, reuse and reduce. And also it says save wildlife. If we burn down the, the, the rainforest, where will these wildlife go? It has get on your bike instead of using your vehicles every day. It says grow more trees. Remember for every tree that you cut, you are to replace two or three more. We had learned that. It says save the planet. Conserve water again. Time for a change students and also like what Josette said, to use our compost pile or organic material and we can use it as mulch to become fertilizers for our trees. Now some other tips, one of them says, turn off lights when you're not using them, turn off water when not in use, reduce, reuse, recycle, make a compost pile, turn off the TV when you're not using it. Many of us have a practice to leave it on and walk away. We are burning energy and electricity. It says instead of using plastic bags for groceries and throwing them away, use a cloth bag. Use both sides of a paper. If you complete an activity on one side of the page, just don't discard the paper. You can write to the back. Unplug things when you're not using them. They burn less energy. Open windows instead of using AC. And also, instead of driving, use driving, use public transportation or a bike. How many of you ride to school? One person, more need to get a bicycle. Now, what are some factors that make a country rich or poor? Think very carefully about this question. Ready? Therese, let's talk about countries that are rich. What makes them rich? I would say the natural resources that they have. The availability of natural resources. Very good, Therese. Come on. Janelle? Um, tourism. Well, tourism. The industries that they have plays a very key role. It helps to generate money for the economy for that particular country. All right. What makes a country poor then? Let's go to that extreme. Patrice, you appear to be very eager to share an answer. Come on. Come back to you. What makes a country poor? Overpopulated. Overpopulated. Rudolfo? Being underdeveloped, therefore not having um, enough jobs providing the industries. They don't have sufficient jobs. Very good. Josette? Um, the misuse of the natural resources. Misuse or mismanagement. Very good, Josette. Let's look at them. What makes a country rich as, a, as compared to a country that is poor? The government invests. There's opportunity for investment, foreign trade between other countries, large labor force. Instead of people just staying home and complaining and not having things to do, people are trained with different skills and they're able to have a career and so their labor force increases. The government has projects to alleviate poverty, availability of natural resources, People have access to funding, to money, to do different things. Entrepreneurship, the youths are able to access grants and funding so that they can start their own business. We have opportunities and, and, and an opportunity for people to become more self-employed. Education, in developing countries, people have, there is a higher increase for people to get formally schooled. And in some developed countries, there is a country, Cuba, where the priority for the, for the government is to have every young person there train and school. Cuba has one of the highest population where you have doctors, nurses, teachers. Think about Belize. Do we have that here? We will come to that. In developing countries that are rich, we call them the first world nations, there is sustainable income for families. People, 
there, there might be cases where some people are ill for, they become, I would say, due to certain situations, they end up on the street and might not have everything to take care of themselves. But the majority of the families, majority of families, have an income where they can survive. Poor countries who have high mortality rate. Think about incidences that we are hearing in Orange Walk. What is going on in regards to our health there at the hospital? What have you been hearing on our local news? Yes, sir. Miss, um, some of the doctors and nurses are not um, highly skilled or trained to do what mm -hmm. they're supposed to do. So the requirements which they do not meet, um, it entails leading up to possible death and injuries, Very sicknesses good to the patients. We are hearing more and more incidents of reports in one of our local hospitals where people's children have been died. There is a report of a missing child and different incidences. And like what Rodolfo said, some of them might not be properly trained, nor do they have the necessary skills that they need. Yes, yes, sir. Isn't that one of the reasons why Belize have we we have to get um, foreign doctors and things like that? That like, is so example, true, also. If you're noticing exactly, if, great point brought up. If you notice, if you were to become a patient and you have to go to the Carl Hushna Memorial Hospital, most of the nurses and doctors there are foreigners. Many of them are Cubans. Some of them are from Guatemala. They come specialized with their skills. Whereas the local, we the Belizeans, not many of us have acquired those skills that are needed to help our own people here. Okay? We have increased crime and violence. At first, the violence was affecting only adults. Now it's affecting our youths. We have a high rate of unemployment, limited access to school opportunities. Many students are on the street. We have mismanagement of resources. We have been hearing of our chate, cedar, and mahogany trees that are constantly being cut down by illegal loggers in our forest areas. And also gender differences. Students, you would be very, very surprised that in some homes, only the males get the opportunities. Where the females, your parents is going to say to you, you are going to stay home and be and have children and married at a certain age. And if you don't get married at a certain age, then you're considered old. Okay? Gender differences. Girls that grow up in the city have a lot of privilege as opposed to girls who grow up in a rural area. Now, what are some examples of natural resources that are being depleted in Belize due to human consumption and exploitation? Think about it. I mentioned one just now in regards to our um, chateau trees and illegal loggers coming into our forest to take the leaves for different purposes and take them back out to Guatemala and Mexico. What are some other natural resources that are being depleted on a daily basis? Jose. Marine life. Go ahead, Jamie. Forest. Or forestry. Good offer. Miss, we recently found out about gold in the forest, Miss. Yes. They had, there, were some, there was a report that they saw some men, like civil, they were trying to extract gold from our waterways. Yes, and we can do more research on that too. It says, elite, this is just, I went on the net students and I copied different reports from around Belize. It says, illegal cutting of rosewood is being done in the south of the country, down in Toledo and PG. And was this report was documented on the 8th of July 2011. It says, we have reported on illegal logwood cutting of pine in the Pine Ridge area of the Cayo district. Well, reports are that illegal cutting of another tree is being done in the south of the country. Rosewood, have you heard about rosewood before? It says rosewood is a beautiful hardwood that grows in Belize, albeit in small numbers in the Toledo district. The forestry department says that some 60,000 board feet of rosewood have been legally extracted, means cut and taken away over the past 18 months. And these rosewood were being shipped to Chinese markets. 
We have just recently a truck was intercepted with over 7,000 feet of illegally cut rosewood. The driver was charged, so we know that they're cutting down our rosewood. Here we have a pitcher illegally harvesting rosewood from the Sarstun Temash National Park in Belize. And it has the Belizean government, they had to intervene and has created a ban. Anybody that is caught cutting down the rosewood would be charged. Here we have a latest assessment on illegal activities again, taking place in the Chikibul. It shows that the financial losses are consistently increasing. And this, this, this report was taken September 27, just recently, 2012. Trees such as cedar, the Chate, and mahogany are constantly being cut by illegal loggers. They are making trails in the Chikibul Forest um, Reserve area cutting down our prime trees. Now, BAS, the Belize Audubon Society, is a non-governmental organization that was formed in 1969, and one of their main goal or purpose is to protect the natural resources in Belize. So they have established different reserves and sanctuaries, such as the Coxcomb Basin Wildlife Sanctuary, Guanacaste Park, which is right at the entrance of Belmopan up here, and we have the Tapir Mountain Nature Reserve all in an effort to protect our flora and fauna in Belize. The American Petroleum Institute estimates that the world's oil supply will be depleted by 2057. Where are we right now, students? In what year are we? 2012. Hmm? 2012. We are not far away from there. It takes millions of years for crude oil to be formed. And if they continue to extract the crude oil from the earth, Eventually, we will have to resort to alternative forms. And some alternative forms, such as wind energy is, and so, the use of solar panels, is very, very expensive in the initial stage. Okay? Commercial fishing companies ignore regulations and do not report their full catch, which expedites the problem. We also have depleting stocks of certain species of fish cause untold problems in the planet's oceans and lakes. It creates an imbalance. I was told just today that some parts of Chetamal do not have any access to fishing products. They have depleted what was there in their seas. Forests worldwide are being deforested at an alarming rate. Remember we had looked at the two maps of Belize, one in an earlier time and one in 2012 where they had done a, um, a forest cover to see how much of our trees have been cut down. Forests where world are being deforested at an alarming rate, especially in old growth forests. And old growth forests have reached maturity and usually unharvested. In addition to cutting down the trees for wood, many forests are being destroyed to make room for crops such as soybeans. Destroying forests leave thousands of animal species without a home as well as reducing the amount of Oxygen, and we said oxygen is very vital for our survival. Here we have a picture of BNE, one of BNE um, refinery here where they extract the crude oil. And it says, in 2005, Belize Natural, Natural Energy discovered commercial quantities of oil in Spanish lookout. Central Belize on its first exp exploration well, the Mike Usher number one. And in 2007, a second discovery was made at never delay. Belize Natural Energy has shipped oil to buyers in Costa Rica, Panama, and the U.S. Gulf Coast. And just yesterday on International News, they spoke of an oil rig leak, which can pose some serious threat for the marine species out there in the Gulf of Mexico. As of March 2012, just this year, BNE operates 11 producing oil wells in the Spanish local field and five wells in the never delay area. BNE sells crude oil both locally and internationally. internationally. BNE sells crude oil on a very small scale or minimal quantity here in Belize. And based on the research that I found students, crude oil, that black oil, before it is processed in refineries in larger developed countries, is used for a variety of reasons. And I found that the crude oil is used for fertilizers, plastics, rubbers, solvent, and pesticides. Okay? Crude oil used for a variety of fuels, fertilizers, pesticides, 
plastics and waxes that you might use to wax your shoe to make it really shine, tar that they use on the street to cover up and secure the hole and the potholes, sulfuric acid, asphalt, synthetic rubbers, even cosmetics and perfumes, industrial solvents as disinfectants to clean machinery, and also as liquid fuels such as butane and profane that we use in our homes. Now what would be some of the social impact when our natural resources are depleting? And I, I really want to show you a video that was um, documented yesterday on Channel 7 News. It's really going to bring out or pinpoint one of the social impact behaviors that we will start seeing in our community whenever our natural resources become extremely depleted. Crooked Tree is about as laid back and homely a place as you can find in the Belize district. But residents of the island village also don't like being messed with and they say that's what the Audubon Society is doing with them. Audubon manages the Crooked Tree Wildlife Sanctuary but today the villagers held a protest to say they'd had enough. It's an interesting declaration of the right to self-determination and we got an earful today. The Crooked Tree Wildlife Sanctuary and its centerpiece, the Crooked Tree Lagoon, broad and tranquil, home to all kinds of wildlife, even the domesticated kind. All overlooked by the nearby visitor center run by the Audubon Society. But this morning the Audubon was the target of villagers who came out to protest against it. Audubon must go because we run things. The things are on we. Everything you've done, you have to done it properly. In a mile village, tree, number one. They want Audubon out because the villagers feel that the Audubon's conservation efforts are intruding upon a way of life they've established over two centuries of occupation. Taking away. Take it away and they take away our livelihood. They take away because we used to hunting for a living. We used to hunt, give not a hamadilly for a living. I educate my little sister. Ne. After that, they have master degree right now in a PhD after hunting for Hamendele and give not. Okay? And they want to take that away from us. After years and years of um, trying to live under the laws and the rules that fisheries, foresters, and Audubon set down on us, we can't do it. it. It's taking away from our livelihood, it's taking away money out of the out of our homes, and food out of picking them out. I'm out here to take my village back from Audubon because Audubon is doing so much foolishness in our community, keeping our young people down, especially my young people. What do they expect? If they stop the young people from, from go fishing and cutting their posts, what will they do? Rob me? Rob we? They say that Audubon is enforcing wildlife regulations that are outside of its purview. When Audubon um, sees somebody fishing, Audubon, who again is a bird entity automatically become a fish entity and they start confiscating nets. I don't know if it's on behalf of fisheries or how that work but they start taking nets and they have taken out of over 50 nets you know I would imagine since they've been here because we can't live like this you know if a man want get sell on 20 posts and make one leave money and take that money and go buy some food for a picnic or some school uniform how they are going to take that way? What give Audubon the right protect that way. Audubon's manager was out of the office today, but we did speak to one representative who said that the problem is not about Audubon. They say it is a legislative one. That legislation emanates from the forest department, which protects forestry resources. The villagers have publicly invited the Audubon to a meeting tomorrow evening in the village. We could not get an answer from the Audubon rep today on whether they would be attending. What is your reaction to the video? It was on the news just last night. With Alpha. Lack of cooperation. Lack of cooperation. There is evidence of lack of cooperation. What else can we say about the villagers? Jamie. In a way, they are overusing their natural resources. Yes. Villager, from time gone by, the villagers in Cooking Tree, they are known to be fishermen and they are known to be hunters. They hunt for their game meat and their marine product. And so BAS, Belize Audubon Society, an organization that has its goal to protect our flora and fauna, going into their village and trying to educate them about what would be some of the social impact. 
if you don't take care of your natural resources, what would be the end result? They do not want to hear that. So one of the social impact, people becoming more frustrated and angry. They do not want to change, nor do they want to adapt. What one of the, th one of the, the villagers in the community there, they will have to learn new ways of living. They have to make changes to the culture that they have learned from a child to adult. It says people become very frustrated like what Rodolfo said. When they are forced or encouraged to change their way of life. Nobody wants to change or adapt. But if they do not change, they will face more serious problems. Civil unrest will occur. People will, be, will start to process and make protests and make a lot of noise with their placards. They will pay higher prices for imported goods. Tax increase to collect revenue by the government. The government is going to charge you. People will pay higher prices to access services from within the community. Increased reports of health issues, and we mentioned that earlier. In rural areas where there is limited access to health facilities, and not only that, skilled personnel. People will have to travel far to access resources. There will be increased crime rate in the communities. If people cannot get food for their children, what do you think they're going to do? Jamie. Mr. Nengue, you know the social problems with the society and start committing crime. Well, they will become part of the social problem and start committing crime. On our local news, there were two extracts that I was able to take down. Here we have woman 18, please guilty to stealing milk and cereal. This was taken the 30th of the 10th month, 2012, right here in October. Claudia Ramos, she told the court she did it to feed her babies because she has no job and no money. It says the unemployed mother of two young children was taken to magistrate court where Hetty May Stewart, the magistrate, charged her for theft to which she pleaded guilty. There was another report of a man that went to steal happy cow cheese and four packs of baking powder all in an effort to feed his family. They do not have the skills that they need to go there and be a part of the labor force. And he was also charged $300 and I believe it was $5 court fine. Okay, so people are be becoming very desperate and starting to commit crimes because they do not have access to the resources that they need. Okay? So we have increased poverty in the homes, which as you can see end resulted in people going out to commit crimes. Also increased incidence of abuse. If your parents cannot take care of you and provide all the basic resources, Sometimes you are abused at home, okay? And also abandonment occurs. And these are some of the social impacts that will occur when there is a deplete, depletion or shortage of natural resources. What changes can we make in our lives to enhance the way we live and at the same time conserve our natural resources from the environment? Rodolfo? The government should think more about the people, especially the younger um, generation, invest in education because that will lead a great role towards um, thinking about our environment as well as giving us new well-formed skills to use yes. in life. Excellent point that you have brought up, Rodolfo. Our government can invest in education and offer new disciplines for young people to explore and develop different careers and also some of those young people can return and help to develop our country as well what else can we do as a nation and as a society provide provide jobs for the people who don't have so that they do not have to um, use up all the resources we can provide job opportunities for them we can have them go through a specific training and then find ways in which they can enter the workforce. Very good, Jamie. Now it says, these are our mitigation measures, some of the things that we can adapt and put into place. It says, resources are features of the environment that are important and of value to human in one form or the other. And however, it says, the advancement of modern civilization where we are now with all our different technology has had a great impact on our planet's natural resources. 
So conserving them is of utmost priority. The first one it says, instead of hydropower, use solar power, like what we have there in that picture there, students, at Hachaki Resort in Placencia. We can recycle products that come from trees such as paper, envelopes, cardboards, and cups. Conserve fossil fuels by purchasing hybrid cars that use electricity and small amounts of gas. Yes, does it? Yes, but in Belize, we don't have the, the place where you go to charge your vehicles that they have in America. How so do don't you think the entire country will have to develop and become more advanced? Yes. Okay, but it takes time and it will take money. Jamie? Yes, but then some of the people who have the regular car won't want to yeah, adapt to it. So then what are we, I know many of them will not want to change, but we have to teach them. And we have to encourage them and teach them about the social impact and the benefits. Okay, it says windmill is used to harness wind energy. Preserve soils and minerals by decreasing the use of fertilizers and chemicals. Instead of using inorganic crops, we can plant our own organic that are healthy, healthy food. Convert forests to national parks, like what the Belize Audubon Society did, and bird sanctuaries so that people will have to learn to respect the laws and respect conservation policies. Also, exercise restraint when watering your lawn. You can use a bucket or two instead of dust using accessible water. Install energy efficient shower heads and faucets, and we have spoken about that. And also recycle materials. Yes, Rodolfo. One last question, Ms. Yes, Rodolfo. Um, like, wouldn't you say it would be a good, good thing if the Audubon Society would work with the villagers um, instead of depending so much on their community, like their village, for all their resources and daily life? Um, things could could they um, be trained to be enforcers of that lot yes. since they know all about it and then work with the Audubon Society for their own community? Excellent question you have brought up, Rodolfo. What the BAS should have done was to go in there, meet, have a meeting with the villagers mm -hmm. and speak to them about the disadvantages and advantages of using the natural resources that are available in their community. Okay, before they, in, they implemented the regulations. Because if you just go and in, implement rules, people are going to become very angry. But if they hear what you have to say and what will be the impact of the depletion of the natural resources, then they might be more willing to adapt and respect the rules. Thank you, students.